Horror, whatever the medium, is a surprisingly hard emotion to elicit from an audience. A lot of people confuse it with shock or surprise thanks to the over-reliance on jump scares in films and video games, which can be garnered actually quite easily. You could drop a piece of cutlery from a table and shock someone who didn't see it coming, with as great an effect as a face appearing behind somebody for a split second in a mirror. But fear, or quasi-fear if you want to get technical on the other hand, well that's much harder. This requires setup, direction, pacing, and information about the threat of danger that is being presented to the audience without them being explicitly told. It's a suspension of disbelief that is easily broken, and there are many examples of horror video games that unfortunately drop the ball on this without sometimes even meaning to, and even a few examples of developers intentionally highlighting the silliness of the situation in order to blow off a little steam. So you know what, let's take a look at when fear fell flat on its face for a few seconds as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight hilarious moments in otherwise truly terrifying horror video games. Number 8. Mansion Basement Music Resident Evil Director's Cut The original Resident Evil is rightly held up as a true survival horror classic. Its incredibly tight direction and use of fixed camera angles create a sense of claustrophobic dread in nearly every scene. This, coupled with enemies that would not take the hint and go down quickly, and a scarce lack of ammo, makes for a runtime of pure exhilarating terror from start to finish. Then in comes the voice acting, and yes, it has definitely been mentioned several times over that this, well, wasn't the best. Stop it! Don't open that door! However, it's become entwined with the experience, and it's almost cruel to mock it. Even if Jill sandwiches and masters of lock pickings aren't the only ham that is on the menu, Barry, please, my man, calm it down. But in truth, there's actually a moment that shatters the immersion of fear even more than these cheesy vocal skills, and that is found in Resident Evil's director's cut, Mansion Basement Music. This track is, uh, how do I put it, ungodly in how hilarious it sounds, and while it does possess an attempt at using stacked notes and uncomfortable pacing to try and make the player feel dread, it comes across like something a clown would have as his ringtone. It might well be one of the most infamously terrible pieces of video game music ever, and actually only serves to remind us all that while the original composer for this game was reportedly deaf, that turned out to be a decades-long ruse and that he had a ghost composer write this and other tracks for him. And you know what, that doesn't explain why this track is so bad when the actual composer was able to hear. Still doesn't stop it from being hilarious. Number 7. The Dog Ending – Silent Hill 2 Never has a video game made me shriek with terror so often and then have ended in such a manner that made me laugh so hard as Silent Hill 2 has. This game might well be the peak of psychological horror in video games, as its finger-on-the-pulse approach to scripting, enemy design and overall atmosphere are second to none. However, as you might expect from anyone who spends too long in the foggy town of Silent Hill, there's quite a lot of mad moments that are hidden throughout, but nothing as unexpectedly hilarious as the dog ending ending which you can get by either completing the game three times with the default ending or once with the much harder Rebirth ending. It's worth the extra hours of work though because witnessing James Sunderland drop to his knees after realising that all of the horrifying events that he'd been experiencing were due to the actions of a dog operating a computer is just perfectly priceless. Although the fact that the man is so distraught and it does appear that the dog is attempting to feed on his tears does mean the comedy of the scene also carries with it some dark undertones, but it does seem like they patch things up come the other comedy endings in the franchise, so there we go. Number 6. Driving Controls – Alone in the Dark 2008 now, while it's fair to say that the reboot slash pseudo sequel of Alone in the Dark that dropped in 2008 didn't hit all of the marks it intended to when it came to providing a consistent horror experience, there were moments of true terror to be found within which were admittedly pretty brilliant, and a lot of the tension actually came from the game's use of fire, seeing as it could spread and destroy the environment if left unchecked. This, coupled with enemies that would often require you to use molotovs or fire against them, could see even an empty room end up as an inferno by the end of things. However, one section that definitely didn't set the world on fire and in fact provided an unintentionally hilarious moment for players came when Edward Carnby takes control of a car. This action sequence, on paper, sounds like a brilliant way to up the stakes by having Edward careen through a collapsing city, leaping over gaps and skidding around corners. It's just a shame that the car handles like it was ripped from bloody deadly premonition. The jumps could glitch out and best of all, if you got too far ahead of the scripting, you could end up driving into invisible walls which were blocked off where chunks of the road would eventually fall down or be pushed up. As a result, it went from being alone in the dark one levels of creepy to alone in the dark movie levels of awful unintentional comedy. Number 5. Pizza Prank Call Blair Witch 
One of the quiet surprises of 2019 was the arrival of a new Blair Witch game, which likely came to the delight of horror video game streamers who now had yet another year's worth of reaction faces on tap. And while the game did stumble a few times across its narrative, it did manage to nail the sheer tension of feeling isolated in a moody wood, all the while feeling like you're being hunted by an unseen force. You could swear down that you saw something behind a tree ahead, and there were moments of sheer terror when your dog would just run off and leave you alone. And it's not like you could just call for help because, as is now typical of the horror industry, the evil forces at work here were capable of messing with your phone signal. However, it's exactly this interface that allows for one of the sole funniest moments of the game to emerge, for if you keep phoning the pizza delivery service listed on your mobile, you'll spark an outburst from the employee who threatens to come down there and kick your ass. But you know what, to be honest, with everything else in this forest being against me, I could actually use a bit of that spice. You know what, mate? Come down and pitch in. Number 4. Easy Mode Soma one thing that people pretty much accept universally is that horror games are meant to be challenging. It's this aspect of the survival in the survival horror genre that truly ekes out all of that juicy fear, and titles in this genre will constantly look to depower the player wherever possible. Enemies that can't be killed, scarce ammo and health packs, and of course, having you die in as few hits as possible. These are the tricks of the trade, which makes it all the more hilarious that Soma, an otherwise terrifying experience, does away with most of these in its easy mode. Seeing an easy mode in any survival horror game is a little strange, but I commend the developers for realizing that sometimes people just want to experience the story but might not have the skills to see it through. However, the knock-on effect of this is that this easy mode actually means that the enemies never attack you. As you can imagine, this turns the game into an absolute farce, because how are you ever meant to find something threatening when it's been programmed not to do you any harm? It was a good idea, but just maybe not one that was executed at the benefit of the game's atmosphere. Number 3. Exploding Teddy – Dying Light Dying Light is a game that teaches you, quite painfully so, to be aware of your surroundings. While it is indeed possible to leap over the heads of the infected with your outstanding parkour skills, there's danger around every corner, and with some enemies like the Volatile that can batter the piss out of you at a moment's notice, it pays to look, listen, and plan every step of your escape. And it's exactly these things, rather ironically, that you have to ignore in order to get one of the funniest easter eggs in the game and a brilliantly silly weapon. For if you happen to stumble across this pink teddy bear in the kindergarten area of Old Town and repeatedly press its nose, the bear will grow increasingly more agitated. After receiving too many prompts, the bear will, in a fit of extreme product recall, explode knocking the player on their asses. However, it's totally worth it because now in its place is a blueprint for the stasis field projector, a custom grenade which, when thrown, lifts enemies off the ground and freezes them in place. Talk about breaking the immersion, right? Now instead of running away from the hordes of infected in an extreme variant of cat and mouse, you can literally just sweep them off their feet and then slash away, laughing maniacally as you do so. Number 2. Dance Party – Visage There is so, so much to love about Visage that it's actually very difficult to put into words. However, I will bloody well try. Beginning life, ironically, with the death of P.T., this spiritual successor with actual spirits was a Kickstarter project that sought to take the tight and brilliantly directed tone of the aforementioned Konami Bash demo and turn it into a full game. The results were absolutely brilliant, with every single encounter resulting in sweaty palms and soiled pants. And this is all down to some wonderful use of lighting, expertly crafted audio engineering, and a clear love of the horror genre from the developers being allowed to shine through. In fact, it's this adoration for the subject material that meant that this game is full of nods to other horror franchises, and one of the scariest and then most hilarious comes in the form of a Silent Hill 4 reference that can be found if the player completes the game once and then boots the experience back up once more. Upon doing so, they'll find a key in their inventory that unlocks a safe. Inside the safe is a scrap of paper with Room 302 scrawled on it. Advancing through the game, we'll see them come to the notable room and be able to use the key revealing the room from Silent Hill 4. It's amazing to see the location in such detail, but before you get too close a look, the lights begin to pop, and a sense of dread begins to rush through you. What's going to happen? Are you going to be safe? Well, the answer to that is yes, you are going to be safe, but you'll also be jumping out of your seat when you see this dancing spirit shake a move. It is bizarre and unexpectedly hilarious, and I love it. And number one, the Spring Break trailer, Friday the 13th The Game. 
Despite officially being as dead as one of Jason's many, many victims thanks to legal issues preventing the game from having any new work being done on it, Friday the 13th the game was a genuinely fun experience. Well, fun in that it was amazing to stalk through the woods as Jason and himself, but an absolute terror to be on the receiving end of this because being one of the survivors is just bloody pant wetting. To see this hulking figure storm out of the bushes should come with a health warning for what it does to your heart. However, that doesn't mean that the franchise was all death and decapitations. Enter the Spring Break Pack, which was a collection of very 80s and very gaudy swimsuits for the counsellors to wear. Now, on its own, this pack would be of little mention. However, the fact that it came with a brilliantly over-the-top trailer makes it worth taking note. As the group all go about their dancing, swimming and, uh, well, clearly smuggling budgies, all seems right as rain. That is, up until Chad starts posing on the beach and gets a harpoon through his face for his troubles. It's good to see that Jason hasn't lost his comic timing over the years. What a ledge. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight hilarious moments in otherwise truly terrifying horror video games. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I do streaming every Wednesday and Sunday. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Even though we detailed today about truly horrifying moments, it was about looking at them in a different light that made us being able to laugh at them. And you know what? I feel like we can apply that to our real lives as well. Sometimes we can absolutely have to deal with true horrors in our lives, unfair situations and things that just feel like they will never get any better. But you know what, my friend? With the right perspective, attitude and support from friends, family and professionals in the support industry, you can turn them into situations where everyone will be laughing in the long run. You are not alone. You do not have to suffer in silence. And all I wish is for you to have the best possible life you can have. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.